There's an active shooter on your campus. You hear the gunfire, the screams, the voices in distress. Your only objective is to keep yourself and your students alive. Get the box. You have just moments to react. What do you do? In this presentation, we'll look at your three best options to surviving an active shooter attack. You can run, you can hide, you can fight. Let's begin with the first of our three survival strategies, run. No matter where you are during an active shooter attack, if it's safe to do so, your first thought should be to escape. Always have a destination for your escape route. Ideally, it should be off campus, away from danger. You'll want to put as much distance between yourself and the active shooter as you possibly can. And an alliteration is the, repetition the run strategy is only appropriate when it doesn't put you or your students at greater risk. You must first try to determine your proximity to the shooter. If you see the shooter is at one end of the campus and you have the opportunity to run the other way, take it. Your leadership will guide your students through their escape. Leave all belongings behind. Okay, I'm gonna have you guys be really quiet. Keep everyone so quiet. Turn your cell phones Make sure right all now. cell phones are silenced. Prior to fleeing your classroom, check the area outside. A small mirror can help you see down the hallway while still providing you safe cover. Leave only when you're certain that you have a clear path to escape. Form the group into a line. Follow the selected evacuation route. Move quickly and deliberately. You must keep your students together as a group. Keep a watchful eye out for the shooter. Along the way, you may encounter others. Prevent them from moving toward the shooter's location and take them with you in your escape. If they will not join you, continue with your evacuation. Always move toward protective cover. This could be anything such as a wall, tree, or a vehicle that can serve as a shield. Don't wait there, but continue on to the next cover point. Put as many obstacles between you and the shooter as you possibly can. Okay, the wall. The wall. When you reach an area you consider safe, call 911 and report the incident. That's right. Remain together until told otherwise. Oh, we have a shooter on campus at Via Fundamental. You may need to use a window to make your escape. Know if the windows in your classroom open wide enough to allow you and your students to pass through. If not, be prepared to break a window to escape. And if you're located above the first floor, think about having a process for lowering your students to safety. To best prepare for a window break, it's a good idea to keep a pair of work gloves, safety goggles, and even a small hammer in your desk. If you need to break a window, first move your students away from the window. You'll require something heavy, such as a fire extinguisher to cause the break. Strike the glass where it's weakest, near one of the bottom corners. It may take several strikes. Use the hammer or some other object to clear away any large pieces of broken glass. Clear away the bottom sill and place jackets or a blanket over the area to avoid any cuts. Use a table or chairs to help with the exit. Okay, kids, we're gonna go to building A. Go to the side of the building and wait for me. Identify an area for your students to run to and wait for you. Assist them out the window opening. You should be the last person to exit the classroom. Use the hide strategy when safe evacuation is not possible. Hiding involves seeking cover in as secure a location as possible. We want the shooter to either bypass our area completely or make it too difficult for him to seek us out. Hiding is very similar to our existing policy of lockdown. It can involve a number of tactics. Okay, everyone stay in your seat. If it's safe to do so, lock your door. Shut and lock all windows. Put heavy paper over windows and draw your blinds and curtains. Turn off the lights. All right, guys, just like we practice, I'm the user and Gus, grab your desk, let's build a barricade. Build a barricade to restrict entry into the room. Use tables, chairs, desks, bookcases, any items found within your classroom that you can pile or stack in front of the doorway. The heavier the items, the better. 
Standing a table on end and leaning it against the door jamb will serve the purpose of a barricade and further limit the ability to see into the room. Okay, let's get these tables down. Create protective cover for students to hide behind by turning tables or desks onto their sides. If possible, hide students in utility closets, restrooms, behind bookcases, or any other areas within the classroom. Noise can alert the shooter to our location. All cell phones must be silenced or turned off. This is particularly important because as news of the attack spreads, concerned parents will call their children. Everyone must remain silent. Admittedly, this will be difficult as the noise of gunfire and other cries will cause fear and anxiety. But work to comfort and quiet your students. We come now to our survival strategy of last resort, fight. If your proximity to the active shooter is so close that neither run nor hide are viable options, then you may need to take active aggression against the shooter. Your objective is to incapacitate the shooter. Our tactics are not brute force, but rather speed, surprise, and focused aggression. Now, fight is not a requirement of any school district employee. It must be a personal choice, one based solely on survival. And fight is not justification to violate the zero tolerance policy of the school district concerning possession of weapons on a school campus. Kids, come on. If you have no other alternative but to fight, here are some points to consider. Stay out of the line of fire. Use cover and concealment to your advantage whenever possible. Speed is critical. If you can, approach the shooter from his side or from behind. Use your full strength and aggression to deflect the weapon away from you and others. When you strike at the shooter, aim high, targeting his eyes, face, or throat. Use your knees to give a shot to the groin. Instruct your students to run to safety. Your primary goal should be to temporarily disable the shooter in order to make your escape. Fight can also entail the use of improvised defensive tools. You'll be surprised how many are within your reach. Textbooks, chairs, or other classroom objects can be thrown at the shooter as he enters the room. A fire extinguisher can be used as a heavy club or a spray to disorient or disable the shooter. Within your desk are sharp objects such as scissors, or even consider using a heavy object such as a skateboard to defend yourself. It's important that you never presume that someone else has already contacted 911. Even if law enforcement has been notified, your additional information will help the responding officers. With the first reports of an active shooter, law enforcement will rush to your school in force. They'll most likely group into small teams. They may be heavily armed. Their first objective will be to stop the active shooter. They won't stop to help the injured. Because they may not know how many shooters are on campus, they'll treat everyone with caution, including you and your students. When you come across an officer, obey their commands. Raise your hands with spread fingers to show you don't have any weapons, and put down any items you're carrying. Follow the officer's orders on when and where to evacuate. Having an action plan in advance of an active shooter incident is your first step toward survival. Begin by taking a physical inventory of your classroom. Identify possible ways to escape, such as doors or windows. Note materials you can use to construct barricades or provide safe cover to hide behind. And catalog the possible items that can be used for self-defense. Map out your evacuation routes. Because we won't know where the shooter will be, we'll need to create multiple routes, each leading in a different direction. Know where all the routes in and out of it are going to be. To gather with your fellow teachers and staff, as well as local law enforcement, perform these same exercises for common areas. These include hallways, playgrounds, lunch areas, gymnasiums and assembly areas, and the library all the places where students and staff congregate. Okay, we're gonna go through our Equally important to planning for an active shooter attack 
is practicing your response. Work with your students to drill the responses for run, hide, fight on a regular basis. The more it can become second nature, the more confident you'll be should an active shooter ever strike your school. And let's get the blinds on the window. Sadly, the threat of an active shooter attack in our schools will probably never go away. But if you prepare, if you know what steps to take, and if you're able to respond decisively and with confidence, you'll dramatically improve your chances of survival. And in the end, your survival and that of your students is all that matters.